A axial flow compressor is basically consists of a rotor and a shaft connected. The sh as the shaft will rotate, the rotor will also rotate. The entire assembly is kept in a housing and there are certain blades are mounted on the rotor shaft. These are called as moving blades and these are which are mounted on the housing are called as fixed blades. These are also called as stationary blades or stator. The first blade is called as inlet guide vein. The moving blade which is mounted on the rotor will impart the kinetic energy to the air while increasing the air pressure. The fixed blade which are mounted on the housing these blades will redirect the air in proper direction and convert a part of kinetic energy into pressure. In this case the flow of air is taking place along the axis of the compressor that is why it is called as axial flow compressor. What we observe is that the height of the blade is gone decreasing as we approaches from inlet to outlet. This is due to this because as we move inward the kinetic energy is converted into pressure energy thereby the density of air will increase. To keep the mass flow rate constant which is given by density density multiplied by area multiplied by velocity and density is given by P divided by RD. So continuously the density is going on increasing and therefore we have to keep the area lower and lower. So that is why the blade height is going on decreasing. In this case we have placed an one extra uh, fixed blade that is called as the inlet guide vane and the function of this one is to provide or to guide the air at the correct angles onto the first row of the moving blade. In this case we assume that the flow takes place at the mean blade height where the blade is peripheral velocity at inlet and outlet are the same. No flow is takes place in the radial direction. We assume extra row of fixed blade is called as the inlet guide vein is fitted to the compressor inlet and these are provided these are to guide the air at the correct angle such that the first row of moving blade will get the proper velocity. In this case it is assumed that the flow is takes place at mean blade height where the blade peripheral velocity at inlet and outlet are the same. It is assumed that no place in the radial direction. The inlet velocity is V1 and it coming at a velocity equal, angle equals to alpha 1 which is the vertical direction. This is the absolute velocity V1 then it passes through the rotor and it leaves at a particular velocity equals to V2. This is the absolute velocity at exit at an angle equals to alpha 2. Now here the V2 is more than V1 because the work is done on the rotor. So this is the absolute velocity V1 and it, it coming at an angle equals to alpha 1. So we can resolve this component into two parts. The vertical component, this component is, this angle is alpha 1. This component is called as VF1, velocity of flow at inlet and this one is called as velocity of whirl at outlet along the x direction. We can using the sine and cos we can find out vf1 in terms of v1 and vw1. The blade velocity at mean is tip of this velocity vector I will obtain the relative velocity vector. So this one is relative velocity vector vr1 at an angle equals to beta1 where beta1 is called as blade inlet angle. It's called as the mean velocity or is called as tangential velocity and is given by pi dn by 60 where d is the mean diameter of the rotor. Vr1 is called as relative velocity at an angle equal to beta1. Now this represents the inlet velocity triangle. Let us consider the outlet velocity triangle. So this one is velocity v2. So this component is called velocity of flow component and this one is whirl velocity at outlet. Similarly we have the blade velocity u here. If I join this one then I will get the velocity of relative velocity at outlet that equals to vr2 and this angle equals to beta2. We can combine these two diagram and we will use the single one diagram. Let this quantity represents u. This one is velocity v1. This one is angle alpha1. This one is vw1 and this one is vf1. This end is exactly meeting at this point. And if we join this line up to this end, we will relative velocity at inlet. To construct the outlet triangle, we will draw your vertical line that represents the Vf2. This component is called as V2 which is more than the value of V1 as because the machine is getting the energy from the outside. 
so this one is v2 velocity this angle is alpha 2 this component is called as vf2 and this component is called as vw2 and finally if we velocity at outlet and angle made by this with vertical is beta 2 so this one is combined velocity diagram in case of axial flow compressor now we'll derive the expression for work done the work done on air is given by w equals to in momentum in axial direction calculate this per unit mass basis i will write here lowercase w that is a specific work change in momentum is defined as mass into change in velocity along the axial direction so we have axial direction is vw2 vector and this one is vw vector and they are acting in the same direction so we have a change equals to vw2 minus vw1 so we will write this difference as simply as delta vw u let's say equation number 1 in this case we assume that vf1 equal to vf2 equal to vf equal to axial velocity and assume to be constant throughout the stage then in that case we can find out the ratio of u divided by vf to prove this in a standard ratio so we write vw 1 plus u minus vw1 so actually i cannot make any changes i just added and subtracted the vw1 now we can break up this quantity and we can write this as vw1 divided by vf plus u minus vw1 u minus vw1 upon vf what you observe here is that vw1 is this quantity and vf1 is this quantity so that quantity is same as equals to what tan alpha 1 u minus vw1 so u is this quantity and vw1 is this quantity it means that it is remaining this quantity this quantity is actually u divided by vf so this angle is beta 1 so this one is same as tan beta 1 in the similar fashion we can write u upon vf now this time i will make the adjustment of vw2 so if i write vw2 plus u minus of vw2 divided by divided by vf vw2 by vf divided by vf two so vw2 is this total quantity that is vw2 this total quantity is vw2 and this one is vf2 so this one is tan of alpha 2 this one is u minus vw2 so u is complete quantity and vw2 is this quantity so this quantity here is u minus vw2 is same as tan beta 2 so this is how we can make simple equations we can also find out the relation between delta vw all divided by the flow velocity is vw2 minus vw1 divided by vf quantity will so vw2 is this vector and vw1 is this vector so this quantity is same as bh and bh is same as ae so numerator is ae b we can write as ab now we can find here this ae can be written as ag minus g ae can be written as ag minus g so this one is ag eg upon vf to make this to make this equation simple we write this as ag ag and we can write this vf equals to ab eg is this quantity i prefer to write vf2 equals to eh is same as bf and this distance equals to your ab so that is equals to tan beta 1 and eg is this distance which is same as fh and this distance is eh so that equals to tan beta 2 so the ratio of delta vw by vf come out to be tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2 for our equation number 1 which is the equation for a specific work is given by w equals to vw we can write as u into vf into tan of beta 1 tan of beta 2 